with identities, you typically want to start with the more complicated looking side, and that is obviously the right hand side of this expression. Now we can see that we have a sin 2x and a cos 2x, so let's just quickly get the formula sheet. With sin 2x, it's a really nice one to have because it, it can only become one other thing, and it usually helps to change it into that other thing. And another confirmation of that is that tan x, we know that that is actually sin over cos. So tan is actually sin over cos. So we want our answer to have a sin at the top, but we don't want it to have a sin 2 at the top. That's a big problem. So we want to expand that sin to x. So let's work on the right hand side. Where are we going to say, okay, I'm just going to write down the original sin 2x over 1 plus cos 2x. Now sin 2x we can see on the formula sheet just becomes 2 sin x times by cos x and the bottom we're just going to go with cos 2x. Now cos 2x is the more interesting one because it can become three different options. We can see over here it's got three different possibilities. So a technique that I always tell students to use is to try and eliminate the one because have a look in the answer which is tan x or which is also, we can think of it as sin over cos, there is no one in the answer. So you want to get rid of the one. So we're going to choose this one over here. And this technique works 99.9% .9 of the time. So we're just going to write it as 2 sin x times cos x. And then we're going to replace, so we're going to say 1 plus, and then we're going to replace cos 2x with 2 cos squared x minus 1. I'm just going to carry on over here. So that's going to give us 2 sin x cos x at the top. At the bottom, the 1's would cancel. And you're just left with 2 cos squared x. So these 2's can cancel. This cos x can cancel with one of the cos x's at the bottom. And so we're left with sin x over cos x. And there we go, we have it as tan x. So then we then have to say, therefore, left hand side is equal to right hand side. Here's number two. So we can see that the left side is definitely the more complicated side. It has two terms whereas the right hand side only has one term. So we're definitely going to work on the left hand side. So I'm just going to write it all out. Now remember the important thing to realize here is not the sin and the cos but to realize that that is a fraction plus another fraction. So when you add fractions together, you need a lowest common denominator. And that lowest common denominator is just going to be 1 plus cos x multiplied by sin x. That's your lowest common denominator. So what that means is that this sin x at the top is going to be multiplied by that part and this 1 plus cos x is going to be multiplied by that part over there. So that we're going to end up with sin x times by sin x plus 1 plus cos x, always in brackets if it's more than one term, and then another 1 plus cos x. And all of that is going to be written over the lowest common denominator, which is 1 plus cos x times sin x. Please don't, or well, most times, you're not going to multiply out your common denominator. Only if you find that you need to towards the end. What we can now do is simplify the top. So sin x and sin x is just sin squared x. We're then going to multiply these two brackets together. That if you, After you do that, you should end up with that over there. And then, of course, we have the denominator, which will remain as it is for now. What you need to see very quickly is that that and that, that just becomes 1. Now, why would we want to do that? Because that those are currently two terms, those two that I've highlighted. But if we change it to 1, remember we know that sin squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. So now we've changed it to a single term. Then I'm just going to write out the rest, and then the bottom part, and then I'm just going to carry on over here. 1 plus 1, that just gives us 2, so that's 2 plus 2 cos x. And then what we can do at the top is we can take out a common factor. The reason we do that is when you take out a common factor, you turn two terms into a single term, or three terms into a single term. I'll show you how this works. You take out a 2, and then you end up with 1 plus cos x. So notice how we only have one term now. And then at the bottom, you have 1 plus cos x times sin x. You see, so the whole idea of simplifying is to go from a lot of terms and do whatever you can. You see how here we had 1 plus 1, so we turned it into a 2, because that simplifies the number of terms. And now look what happens. Those cancel, and we are going to be left with 2 over 
sin x, which I think is what we were trying to find. Yes, that's what we were trying to find. So what we do then is we say, therefore, left-hand side is equal to right-hand side.